Yes, yes, right. Food and money. Well, you guys are in for a real treat. These are just some wonderful uh, uh, men, uh, carvers, their fathers, their uh, husbands, and they are traveled all the way from their tiny village. You see in the map over there, it says Tocuano, Michoacan. That's where they, that's where they live in Mexico. Uh, Michoacan is a wonderful state, mountain state. You can see that's the Sierra Madre range going right down that west coast. You can see so right there. And if you've ever studied about the monarch butterflies, how they fly from all the way up here, that's where they go to a special sanctuary, a government uh, protected forest where the butterflies go down there. And it's because it is in such a remote area, kind of hard to get to, a lot of traditions and customs are still practiced, passed on very proudly from one generation to the next. Um, these artists have, are creating, are carving a mask for your school. Now, first of all, everybody sees that little banner over there. I gotta plug my my company. Anybody been to Margarita's Mexican restaurant? We have one in Framingham, one in Waltham. If you walk in there, you see this incredible artwork. We decorate our walls and furniture. All comes from artisans in Mexico. So we're on tour. We were at a Revere Margarita's last night, right by the airport. They were carving. Uh, today it's uh, 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 Avedo's turn. And it's hard to imagine, maybe Princess Pisa. This started out as a block of, uh, just a hunk of wood, like this right here. See that? So this morning, he took a machete to that piece of wood. The first group got to see all the little dangerous carving, you know, hacking the wood chips flying everywhere. Uh, and he's just attached a little beak here for this. This is going to be a, a, a dove, a bird on top of the skull. What's the big fiesta coming up in Mexico? Dia de los Muertos. That's right, Dia de los Muertos. So, or Day of the Dead in English. And it's a fiesta where they believe that all of their loved ones and their who died return, their spirits return to be with the living. So they often, artists will often carve images of skulls and skeletons and so forth. So this is in honor of that fiesta coming up. They are uh, making this mask for your school. You can, you can see right out of it and everything. This is wood from up here in New England. It's called basswood. They like to carve the wood while it's still soft because it's very easy with the tools that they have. Right now, right, excuse me, right now I see them both working with uh, tranchetes, which is a, a hooked knife. Later on he's going to show you the tools. If you look over here, you can see some of the masks that they've made. This represents months and months of work. Their specialty uh, is making dance masks, masks that are actually used in, in fiestas. They reenact these uh, these ancient plays called morality plays. The famous one they do is called the Pastorelas, and it tells the story of, of the creation of good and evil, heaven and hell, and this whole the whole Christian uh, concept of how to treat people. And so you have devils, you have saints, you have shepherds, and the the principal devil uh, is wears masks. This is one that they carved. This is one piece of wood. The skeleton, the snakes, are all carved in the same piece of wood as the face of the devil. The horns are, are carved separately. Same thing with this. The snakes are from the same piece of wood, the horns, and uh, the fangs are carved separately. This is a decorative mask. Uh, Modesto made this. It's an owl with a skeleton in his mouth. But that's all made from one piece of wood. Um, this is a sirena, a mermaid. This is an ermitaño. This represents a wise, holy man in the in the play. Notice the eyelashes that they have. Those that they actually get those from taking goat skin. They slice the hide real thin, and the hairs actually stick to the hide, and they glue it on top. Um, this is a mask that was actually used in the fiesta. A modesto made it for his son, so he was in it. This is another mask for the fiesta. This is a decorative mask. It's an owl, and they carved the snake separately. The reason that the, the paints are so shiny is because they like to use automobile paint. It's the same kind of paint you would use to paint your car. It's a lacquer-based paint. It dries really very quickly. And then also, they put a little bit of lacquer on top. To make the, the paint, the skeleton look like real bone, they'll take a polte. It's a tar, and they dissolve it with gasoline. They rub it up, paint it on, and, and, and rub it off. And it helps to give more depth to the masks. This is actually a mask that was made for a different region in Mexico. This is used by the Yaqui. 
tribe in northern Mexico, near just across the border from Arizona. And this actually has horse hair, part of that man. Now these can be several hundred dollars. They're, they take weeks to, to carve, so they would be something you would find in a gallery or a collector would buy. But they still make masks that are affordable, affordable for people. Here you see a double mask, miniature version of the skeleton. On. One piece of wood. The uh, horns are carved separately. They just fit right in there like that. They'll sometimes use animal parts. As I mentioned, the goat, the goat hair. These whiskers and eyelashes are made out of javali, which is a wild boar. They take the hair off the hides, and then they drill little holes in there and glue it with what they call cola loca, which is crazy glue in English. Here's some cute little, little, mu little, little bunnies, conejitos. <laughs> Conejo. And we have a, a rana. Frogs. Venado. Deer. <laughs> Let's see. Ar armadillo. Armadillo. What other animals have we got here? Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, alligator. Or oh, crocodile. Crocodile. And we have, oh, we have here a little tiny miniature chupacabra. You ever heard of the chupacabra? It's like the version, like the boogeyman, little monster. Kills goats. And they make these neat little ducks, patos. They take the reeds that grow in a nearby lake, they tie them together really tight, and they sculpt the, the reeds, and they add a little uh, head, they carve it out of wood, and then they uh, paint it. There's sirenas. They make these little miniature mermaids. Check that out. One side is a, the face of a woman, and the other side is actually a fish. Kind of a cool idea, little design. Um, they do some with a couple heads connected, uh, like this one is a, a person and a tiger represents when they get really angry and get as mean as a tiger. Oh, and here's one of Avedo's favorites. He calls these picudos. It's a crow with a snake in his mouth. Then they, you know, it started out as, as boys, they started making these little miniature masks, these little, like, little necklaces. And of course, you know, for Day of the Dead, they've got lots of different pieces of, you know, snakes with skulls on it. A snake in Mexico is a symbol for good luck. It's nothing like we think of a snake as being a sinister, sneaky little creature. But in Mexico, it's a totally different meaning. In fact, there's a pyramid outside of Mexico City. It has a whole, it's in honor of the snakes. Feathered serpent. Puede mostrarle herramienta que ocupa para... Bueno, primero, utilicé el machete para darle forma a la máscara que hice, quitando la tecata, haciendo la parte de atrás plana y, y dando, empezando a dar forma con el machete. So he uses the machete at the very beginning to, to flatten the back of the mask so it can be proportionate and then he uses that to, to carve off the, uh, the bark and to make the very basic round shape of the face. Luego, sure. I videotaped the entire process. There's a camera right up front close. So if you can't see, you can go on my website later and you will be able to see it up close, up close. Yeah, the first right? group here, so I mean... Don't worry, you will get to see it. Yeah, the first class today saw him hacking away with that machete and then it was pretty impressive. I don't know if anybody down, we woke up people downstairs. But the thing is heavy. That's not the kind of machete you would use to cut like jungle shrubbery or something. That thing is made from a big piece of steel. It weighs about two or three pounds. Luego utilicé el angaro 
el hangar lo utilicé para vaciar la parte que va la más donde va la cara para que sea la máscara con el hangar the hangar is called the curved ads he swings that almost like a hammer and it scoops out the wood from behind the mask so it can be worn and also to get some of the basic features in the front luego utilicé la la gurbia la gurbia me sirve para donde, pa donde no alcanza a llegar el hangaro y le tomando más madera, haciendo la profundidad a los ojos, eh, hacerle las partes curvas con la gurbia. So the gurbia is a special gouge he uses to scoop out more behind the mask where you can't quite reach it, swinging the, the ads and also to get some features around uh, the face. El canoyudo lo, lo utilicé para darle forma a la paloma, abrir los ojos, hacer huecos con el canoyudo. Y ahorita estoy haciendo los dientes. Canoyudo es called a fluted gouge. And it's got that really pronounced U shape to it. Pushes that in there. Again, to get more depth around the eyes and the nose. And he's using it right now to define the, los dientes. What do you think dientes are? Oh, eyes are ojos, dientes, teeth. Yeah, what he's doing, see he does, see, see that little, he's made those little grooves there, people crunch, but see those little grooves. So he's put that, he pushed that tool in there, and he's going to carve around to make all the teeth. It's almost finished this. So the nariz is the nose, ojos. Eyes, dientes, la boca, mejilla, cheeks. Those are all the different features that he uses to define. And the paloma is Spanish for anybody know what kind of bird that is? A paloma. Dove. A dove, that's right. A dove is a paloma. There's often beautiful songs about the, the dove, the paloma. Luego utilicé el formón con el golpe. El golpe es un pedazo de madera que me sirve para ir abriendo los ojos, la parte también de atrás, un poco aquí en las, en las alas y esto fue con el formón. Ok, el formón es el chisel, el golpe es un mallet que es en realidad hecho de un pedazo de oak firewood que su padre cortó para que sea como un hammer de madera. Eso es usado para tener más depth around behind the mask to reveal more you talk about las alas the alas are the wings if you, if you ever order like chicken wings or something they call them alitas little wings and that's what he uses to again in some masks you use that to scoop out around the eyes like that that we can pass that around so that's you get to see what it's like to wear a mask that's one that was carved out of wood from new hampshire up here in new england this is another one that was made out of wood from Mexico. It's called the Copal. And notice this is vida y muerte. One side is alive, one side is dead. You can try that. That's kind of a cool one too. Try that. So they're, they dry out pretty lightweight. So they're not that heavy if you want to you know, tie it onto your head and use it in a dance. Y luego? El más principal que utilizamos es el tranchete. Con este limpio, y voy haciendo los, los dientes, como ahorita, ¿ven? See what he's doing now? Está sacando la madera. Uh, the tranchete is a great tool, very useful. It's got that nice broad uh, blade. It's a hooked knife. Uses that for detail work, like he's using it right now. He's made that little, he's uh, pushed in the, the cone of to get that little uh, curve, and then he's using the tranchete now to define the teeth. So he'll finish this mask today. He knows uh, from going to different schools how much time we have in the daytime, so he knows he won't make a mask that's too difficult for them. Uh, but if they're working on a special commission like those devil masks, it takes several weeks to carve one of those. And that's pretty much the tool. Those are the tools that they use to carve. They do have a drill that they use to drill holes in occasionally. Uh, but other than that, it's all handmade. Now, it's an extremely dangerous method of carving. Notice he holds the, the
the piece one hand and carves with the other. A lot of carvers up here will fasten the work in a vise, use a mallet and a chisel and sculpt on around it. But this is the method they've learned. So if they were to slip, they can get some pretty serious cuts. ¿Y cuántos dedos tienen todavía? Todos? No. They have all their fingers. So they take it, they have to be very calm and, and focused and concentrated on that so they don't uh, mess up. Now, Modesto is, is, he's just, look at these things. He's just been carving these just right now. They go in his spare time because he's finished painting this. Ya está terminado? Ya está, ya está terminado. He's finished painting the, uh, the snakes on this. This, is, this was one piece of wood. You see what it is? Very nice mask. And then, so he would have whittled around to reveal those snakes, two snakes. They're all kind of connected on the nose. And then here, so they don't just fall off. Very clean carving. This would have been sanded. And then he comes up with his own color patterns. And all those little tiny dots are all painted by hand. He's been, this, he's been working this for four days, just painting that. And this is made with, these are painted with acrylic, so they're not the other paint. paints. This paints from up here. Para poner otra capa de blanco. Sí. Está bonito. Más detalles de que 